Right. Hello, everyone. Um, this is Adrian Warnock here, and I'm here with uh, Ebby and Sharon. And um, well, I guess we might as well start with the good news, huh? Who's going to say it? Who's going to Who's going to share the good news? <laughs> one of you two? Um... Uh, Sh Sharon, you should. You should. You should. <laughs> well, we have. Shall I get the official? Let's Let's get the official right now. What is that right now? So the fundraising right at this second is a hundred and eighty nine thousand six hundred and seventeen pounds wow which is great great yeah great it's amazing it's yeah unbelievable yeah, yeah. so so um and, and my understanding is that we kind that kind of means we basically there is that right more or less yeah so we know that um simon and david have given a five figure sum each so that would mean we've hit the target minus some fees there's still some fees but yeah so we still need a little bit more yeah um, a little bit um, more just for the fees but otherwise yeah done yeah. and, and, and Ebby is a, um, as always is a real man of faith um because i remember i'm pretty sure in our interview um I think it was right in the interview I did with you the other day. Um, mm. It was like the other day. It was a week ago now, wasn't it? Almost. Um, yeah. That he was talking about wanting to set up a charity with any extra money. So, um, you know, when you've got a target of two hundred thousand, you know, to think about extra is amazing. But you know, obviously, you want to be able to help other people too, don't you? And such like. So, uh, people shouldn't stop giving, in other words, um, because yeah. obviously, and we don't know exactly. I suppose there might be extra needs that come up as time goes on as well. So that's right. So we're going yeah. to need a buffer just to be sure, because um, when Nathaniel was in for his chemotherapy, there was an overspend of about six thousand pounds. Yeah. So having that buffer is quite helpful. Yeah. So. Hmm. So anyway, and I've just suddenly realised there might be one or two people watching they're like scratching their heads and saying what's all this about so um yeah. i obviously know very well and sharon knows very well and ebby knows very well but um maybe ebby you could just give us a quick summary of the situation and why we're raising the money just for anyone who's new to this uh first of all thank you to everyone who is made sure this has come to come true um Adrian, please, I want you to clap for Sharon. <laughs> Today is a uh, anniversary festival. And um, she's one of my, my, you know, when you have what they call a hunchback. Yeah. A hunchback means you. I'm going with you. You're not going anywhere. Where you go, I go. That's where she is. Yeah. Um, she's been a big push to this and I want to appreciate her. Well, um, Nathaniel's story. Uh, should we just appreciate her then? <laughs> yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I know what I'm like, I'll forget otherwise. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Sharon. You're welcome. Thank you so much for your, um, if I'm allowed to speak my language. Yeah. But you, 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 you are, yeah? You stand for my back, it means you are behind me. Yeah. Uh, Nathaniel's story is, is quite um, touchy. Um, I don't want us to go down that lane today. Um, we were trying to raise money to treat this young man. He's my son, but he's a young man now. Um, and um, we met so many stumbling blocks, so many hurdles to cross, so many rivers, so many tears. But um, here we are today, we're able to count a hundred and eighty what thousand pounds? Say that again, Abby. A hundred and how much thousand pounds do we have now? Hundred and oh, let me remind you. Have we gone up? Just while we're talking, it's probably gone up again. That's what's been like all day. Yeah, 189,972. So nearly 190, yeah. See, as, as, at, as at yesterday, we were struggling to get to 50. Yeah. Um, the hospital treating him gave us a deadline. 
to waste the needed funds so as to not their fault anyway no. because they had to get the medications they have to do their planning if we intend to do the bone marrow transplant since we already have the stem cell ready so that is why we are raising money so mm -hmm. it's not like um it's 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 um it's overwhelming i i am moved to tears whenever i try to remember why we have to raise money and how far we have come i remember this for this same nathaniel's course i had to take him to the hospital i counted in a month 11 times i had to take him to the hospital in a month 11 times it was it has been a journey but here we are today, we have moved beyond all those days, and now we are so close to our desired goal, and that I wish for everybody listening, mm -hmm. that whatever it is we desire, that it will come to pass, definitely. I thank you all so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My emotions are, you know, taking control over me at the moment. But I thank you so much for giving my son um, hope, mm. giving his family, um, like um, Adrian says, it is not coincidence that all these are happening. If it's once, yes. Twice, yes. But when it keeps going on and on and on, there's something else in between this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm grateful. Thank you. Yeah, well, it's, it's just amazing. So I let's just take a little sort of step back for a minute because um, a lot of people who are watching this, I guess, will have been on the Facebook group and, and may have seen Sharon's name on there, or they may have seen Sharon's name on the GoFundMe. Um, but I guess, you know, well, it's it's fairly obvious that, that, that Sharon isn't like your blood sister or something, or, you know, <laughs> family member. Very close. <laughs> but um, no. how, did you, how did you get involved in all of this, Sharon? And, and what have you been up to? <laughs> um. There's a little bit of a backstory to this. So we've spoken about this, Adrian, that yeah. my husband was diagnosed with a mutation called the RUNX1 mutation, which gives him RUNX1 familial platelet disorder. And because he has that, he has a 50% chance of developing acute myeloid leukemia in his lifetime. That's a huge chance, isn't it, really? Yeah, it's it's been quite a journey for us. Um, and we, you know, have had the bone marrow um, checked, so he doesn't have AML. And I know how scary that is. Um, to think that our children could have inherited the same gene and be in Nathaniel's position, it's, it's terrifying. When I met Abby, I was probably more of a hassle than, <laughs> than help because I asked so many questions. I was like, this can't be, you know, this, this can't be the case. I was in this AML group trying to spread the word about the RUNX1 mutation. And I found a story and I thought, surely not. Surely there's not a child needing emergency care and is not getting it. It just can't be the case. Um, and it was the case and we went through and he went over and over and over with me and we tried all sorts of different routes and all sorts of different people and at the end it just came down to we need to find the funds mm. Mm. now having worked in press relations before I knew that press can be a double-edged sword and it it was a last um last you know idea for me I didn't want to to put it in the press but I knew that if we didn't you know he he was so sick at that point and if we didn't he would probably die um yeah and I spoke with Abby quite frankly that 
you know, this could open up a can of worms and it could make it quite difficult, this process for them, because there'd be a lot of things said and it's open to public opinion and it would be really difficult for them. And we had this conversation quite frankly, um, but we decided that that was what we would do. Um, and I got in touch with some journalists that I'd worked with before. Mm. And an amazing lady at Reach PLC, she picked up the phone to me and heard me out. And if it wasn't for her, I'm really not sure we would have gotten to where we are now. Mm. It's, just, it's a step by step sort of journey, isn't it? And yeah. And I guess, Sharon, I mean, we can certainly say if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have got to where we are. Because I know even for sort of me and the small role I had in putting it onto the website, it was you that I came to for a little bit of extra information. Yeah. Obviously, I went to Abby as well. Um, just to understand what was going on and um, what you'd been doing. But essentially, um, what you've basically just told us is that you were just another person on a Facebook group uh, who didn't know this family at all. You'd never met them. Still haven't met them face to face, have you? Or have you? No, we uh, haven't. Face to face. Soon, um, but not yet. But not yet. And, um, and basically decided to treat Ebby's son as if he was yours I guess the best way of looking at it decided to treat him the way you would want to be treated if you were in that situation and I think that was one of the things that caught my kind of gaze about this whole thing was just trying to put yourself literally in this family's shoes and you know to, to have traveled into the country you know in this case with a view to having an unrelated well what they thought was an unrelated they had no idea what, what was going to happen let's put it that way yeah. and then have this thing blow up I mean I, I thought what if you'd gone to America or something to go on a holiday and you hadn't remembered to get travel insurance or you thought you had travel insurance and you didn't it turned out some, something went wrong with it or they and you were there stranded with a with a child needing desperate help and um, yeah the thought that someone could could not be funded I mean it's just sort of shocking and I guess when you sort of think about it you can understand why the NHS has to take the position they do because yeah. otherwise you'd be opening the floodgates to everyone but it doesn't kind of feel right it doesn't sit right does it this idea no. and, and, and I, I think mean, that's I, I, go I ahead think it had um I think had AB traveled knowing that his son had a terminal illness um I don't think it would stop me helping him but what really struck me from knowing all the information i've been privy to every hospital letter every medical note every test you know i have a file full of everything that abby sent me so that if he says can you send this to someone it's there and i've seen everything and i know that he didn't have this diagnosis when he was in nigeria so that made it even harder because i thought they've came here you know when you have cancer, it's very difficult and very expensive to get travel insurance. I know my husband can't even get insurance for his blood disorder. So how people expect a family to afford, whilst they're fundraising for an eye operation, insurance that would cover them against acute myeloid leukemia, it's just not going to happen. No. And so I, I put myself in their position and I just thought, I cannot walk away from this. I cannot keep scrolling Facebook. I cannot close the chat window. I need to keep going until I can't go anymore. And me and Abby have spoken every single day since January. Hmm. We've, you know, we're like so close. Our families are so close now because we've been through this journey together um, since January. So, so really, um, it was something of a of a miracle that um, you know, of all the people that would catch on to this story yeah. first, if you like, you were press. Yeah. You know, you had those press connections and and that sort of background to help in that in that way. I mean, that's that's quite yeah. remarkable. Small cog in a large machine. I mean. I connected Debbie with Angela and, and they've done the rest of that work. There's nothing that I've done after that point. So I'm not going to take credit for that. 
they didn't have to do half of the things that they they have done and they've been so empathic and compassionate mm. so this is, sorry, this is the mirror it. people is that what you're talking yes, about yes that's right, right. Yeah. so angela's um an editor at the, the reach plc which is the mirror and the sunday people and so she's been really a huge support in getting this story out there and you know we text a lot um just talking about this and we're just all rooting for the family and rooting for nathaniel and just want him to get this chance but it's not over yet i mean this is a celebration we've reached that target but nathaniel has to get through this treatment still yeah. and that's scary and i don't know what that really entails because this is not something that i've got experience of so every day i'm asking abby what does that mean you know oh, how long is it going to be? you know because <laughs> yeah, i want to know, know. <laughs> yeah yeah and i mean this is this is obviously you know it's a chance at life isn't it this is what we're talking about here yeah it's a chance at life um and it's Very a great one. chance of life and it's a chance of a cure as well um and a chance of a normal a normal life potentially uh, yeah. for this young man um and yet of course you know we know that aml can be a a killer and um a lot of people in the uk will have recently heard of of um ashley kane's baby mm -hmm. uh, who, who sadly died um when they were in the middle of their own sort of fundraising efforts for yeah and a lot of people will remember that azalea's face and eyes had all swollen mm. and that's how i saw nathaniel for the first time so mm. i know now and, and when me and Abby first spoke he said they're only going to offer hospice care because it's so expensive we can't afford that um what can we do um and i thought hospice care so back in january mm. nathaniel was going to be set up to die and now he's been set up to live it's, yeah yeah you know, it speaks for itself <laughs> yeah no i mean it's and that that hope is really important and and i think you know we don't want to go over all the ground that um ebby and i went over a week or whatever it was ago actually i don't think it was as much as a week ago was it it was um yeah. some few some few days ago yeah a few days ago but, but but obviously one of the things that will come out in that if you if you go and watch that is just ebby's faith um and obviously for him you know and um it's a very much a faith in god um, but there's a hope there that, you know, he's really hoping and rooting for his son, but he's also um, not unrealistic. He knows that this isn't necessarily a hundred percent guarantee, but it's, it's a, a chance that any parent would want to take for their child. That's the point. Um, mm. because it, there is, you know, every chance. And the amazing thing about blood cancers in general is that for children, you know, of my generation, when we were children, I know, um, I know someone personally, actually, who, who had blood cancer around that time. I didn't know him when he was a kid. He's actually a little bit younger than me. And um, back in the sort of 80s, I guess. And it was around that time, something like 80% of kids with, with, with blood cancers would, would die. So this is leukemia mainly. Um, and now that figure's been turned on its head. And so about 80% will, will survive, provided yeah. they get the treatment they need, you know? Yeah. Um, and treatments are happening all the time uh, new treatments new studies new yeah. things are found and um, just last week i found out that one of the blood cells that my husband has looks remarkably like um, mds so there's now this understanding that they could be looking at someone with ronx1 instead of someone with mds and this just this just happened in research we don't always get um you know up-to-date research in our faces as such it's sort of released in medical papers but it's not always that obvious but it's moving all the time yeah and, and if, if i understand correctly because i didn't think we mentioned this before um part of the reason why the original estimate came down was because of a clinical trial is that correct um not a clinical trial i don't believe oh. is that right Abby? no most of the times the uh paperwork you try to get from google is um, outdated right yeah um, um if you run to google to check up a a symptom 
what you're going to see is going to scare you. So that's why we're having this yeah. um, disparity in success cases and yeah. cases of, um, you know, um, fatal cases. Like you mentioned, in the 80s and all that, 80%, you know. But right now, I think um, they have some, some new, new drugs. Mm. And um, I think the doctors who are also going back to see, um, go back to their notes and see um, what and what happens when they use this particular drug. Mm. So if you look at um, um, the treatment for, the chemotherapy treatment for AML, or rather, most chemotherapy drugs are very used to be very toxic because it goes straight to the body. It kills good and bad cells. It doesn't care what I'm killing. Just go in and kill while the doctors begin to manage the symptoms yeah. and whatever comes with it. But now they have drugs that don't are not that harsh that just go to, for instance, um, like Nathaniel's case, what um, I learned from the doctors was um, his own type of AML has to do with immature cells. So they have drugs now that make those cells mature and die off. And the word he did, the prof said, he said the, the, the cells turn mature and they commit suicide. Yeah. So that's a, probably is a sign and the venatoclax yes. range of drugs. Yeah. So that, so that drug is being used in a number of different blood cancers now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And we're seeing this kind of cross fertilization with a few other drugs where sometimes a drug will start off being used with one type of blood cancer and mm. then they obviously have to then see and test as to whether it might work in in other types and my understanding mm. is that it, even if it's not a clinical trial venetoclax is quite a, you know it's quite a new treatment for aml mm. um so it's it's not treatment that's available in every country for example so the, the original estimate was 825,000, but that was with that was an estimate on the files that came from Nigeria. So when Nathaniel went through his first stage of treatment, they found out he was much better than than they thought. So the treatment came down because of that. Mm -hmm. And the treatment also came down because Gosh waived their private doctor's fees. Mm -hmm. And so they're now treating Nathaniel in their own time, which is amazing. Yeah. You know, that's a huge thing to do. That's a huge thank you to, yeah. to Great Ormond Street and to the, the doctors there. Who, you know, these are, this is some of the top specialists in the world. Um, yeah. And they're often either treating, well, they, I guess they're mostly probably treating two groups, the NHS patients for the UK, who are obviously free but paid for by the government. And then obviously, you know, wealthy people who, who, who may be able to fund these kinds of treatments. So it's not particularly common I guess for people in this particular situation certainly not in England anyway I'm sure it's not the first but it's not um, that common is it yeah I don't think I've heard of anyone doing this um mm. coming from a country and um not being able to afford treatment and then suddenly being able to find the amount of money that we have it's I, I just quite an can't amazing quite fathom how it's happened Adrian you see what I say about the coincidences yeah. Yeah. You see what I say? They they, they repeat themselves one too often. Yeah. Is that saying that lightning does not strike twice? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so it's, it feels very much, doesn't it? And it's this is, I think, a really good example of the kind of what we would call the journey of faith, isn't that? Where um sometimes I think right. you know, you can be like, oh yeah, you know, God heal my son, and that's great. <laughs> And you might even think, yeah, I believe God's going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but actually what's happened here is not some um, huge sort of supernatural miracle in that sense, although there has been miracles, but there've been miracles more of these kind of coincidences, like you said. And then it's like a step-by-step -step thing. So it's like, mm -hmm. what do we what do? We do if, if Okay, so my son could go to hospice or he could be treated. Okay, mm -hmm. we want this one. So... How do we go down this treatment route? What's the first step? You know, and I guess connecting with a stranger from Scotland <laughs> <laughs> was that first step, you know, but it was only the first step, but then that was a step. And then the next yes. step followed and then the next step followed and then the next step followed. Yes, yes, you're right. It's, um, 
I don't sound like a broken record, but I cannot explain what happened all the way mm. till today, you know, because um, even today's 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 um, events, I, I don't know what to say mm. because this event was just planned under, um, Sharon, remember when we got the the email. The, the, yes, the email from them. Yeah. Probably, so this is this morning we're talking about now, aren't we? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. This morning, yeah. You know, I, we got the email when um, the the people did the stuff, uh, where they did the the newspaper stuff. You know, the front page, yeah. Yeah, because it's step know, by step, isn't it? I mean, yes, this morning they couldn't have looked at this without. Yes. Yes. Without the newspaper, and probably as well without seeing that actually, oh, some people are getting behind this because this that's, is a story, isn't it? It's like, oh, look, we've raised, so we've raised forty thousand or whatever it was at that point. That's that's that, quite a big sum of money. You yes. Know. So that is just it. Uh, this every step of the way, we were we were airlifted. That's the word I will use by some propeller, some some force. Because I I can't I can't wrap it around my head how we were able to get to what we, we have just today. We have yeah. not even gotten to <laughs> 9 p.m. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just yeah, I today. feel like we need to check the number again because it's probably gone up just while we've been talking. <laughs> it probably has, yeah. Let me check. Just today, just today. 191,740 yeah. Wow. So, you know, you see? it's just... It's, you see? It's, Looks like before we go to bed, there'll be two hundred thousand just in that <laughs> in that account. I reckon at this rate, but who knows? Just just today, you know, mm -hmm. I I so I'm just trying to have a rewind of the whole events. Just today, yes, we, we the good thing about it is that every new day we had this move, new movements. Every new day we had this new movements. Now we have so many other calls. They want to do interviews and all that. And I'm saying, oh, please, oh, I please, let me hide my head. No, I... you can't do that. You, don't have to think of, <laughs> you know, Abby, you have to think of all these other kids that you're going to help too. Oh, oh, sure, sure, sure. I was just joking about that. I, I know you are. But that, what I'm saying is that, that that's a call on you at the moment. And yeah, you've got to be wise. I'm sure you have to turn some things down. But, you know, it's it, the, these doors open and it's a, a rare opportunity, isn't it, for us to shine a light on this suffering yes, not yes. just your son but all these other mm. kids um because yes, you've spoken yes. about that before haven't you and, and you one of the things that impressed me about you is the fact that most parents i think in this situation would be hyper focused on their son and of course you are but you've also been thinking about other people and trying to help other people on the forums and and such like that you've met with with other parents with with kids with their own oh, um, story the thing is, the thing is um where wherever you are, you have people around you that are just like you. So I know that a lot of kids, a lot of parents who are also in the same situation that I'm in. They might not be here in the UK, yeah. but we have them in social on social media. Mm -hmm. It's heartbreaking enough to see my own son going through this. Um, the word is yes, I have been helped, but there are some cases when you see them, you really want to do all you have to do to, to also help them mm. because their cases too are also as hopeless as my case yeah. had been like January. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. And we can't help all of them. And I think sure. one of the things we look at, sometimes we look at the world and we look at the whole needs of the world and we think, oh, there's nothing that little old me can do. But one of the things that's blessed me about this story is even really? though we've had a few sort of large donations um, that you, you've mentioned, actually the vast majority of them have been like 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 pounds, mm. maybe 50 pounds. You know, anything more than 50 pounds is quite unusual as you look down that list. Mm -hmm. um, and so it really does show that there's an opportunity for us to just make a difference in front of our faces sometimes, mm. you know, it, it, you know what I'm trying to say, like the, the thing that God puts in, in front of your face, you know, so when I discovered that you were in my Facebook group that I run, 
and I didn't really know what was going on. But once I heard, I was like, okay, oh, let no. me just get my head around this. I was a bit like you guess, Sharon, in a way. Um, yeah. I was like, I've got to do something here. I've got to, and it's like, I have a small part to play in this and we can all have a small part to play in this. And it's a wonderful thing, actually. I hope it's a, a liberating, hope-filled thing for people to realise that, you know, okay. their £10 or their hitting share on their Facebook or their hitting yeah. retweet on their Twitter has all helped because you know it's definitely built step by step by step and then of course you know this morning with with um philip and oh my gosh what's her name holly <laughs> holly yes i mean that was a um, wonderful holly. interview and the doctor well, the doctor too yes and sarah Odo, she was she was wonderful she yeah i, I think probably she had uh, she has she has a um, idea of what is going on Mm -hmm. So she really, she really hit the nail on the head. She, I think she sat down to really understand leukemia. And, you know, the funny thing about leukemia, it doesn't look at the size, your, your color. It doesn't look at the height. It doesn't yeah. look at anything. It could hit from one month old to a hundred year old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, um, I, I, I really wish to, the um, research um, people will be able to come up with a treatment that would favor a, a lot of people because yeah. if you it's, it, and it's so it's so rampant now in the world sometimes I try to find out where does it come from like how how can a child have leukemia or mm -hmm. where is it coming from so, but the prof, I asked him some questions, you know, you know, and he explained to me about genetic twitches. Mm. It could be along the line of the person was growing. But then now, now Sharon, and I want to come back to the run one X. Sometimes it's hereditary. Yeah. And no one knows. Um, so there, there needs to be a lot of talking to, you know, and a lot of um, research done on leukemia. Yeah. So as to find out is it an environmental is it caused by environmental issues mm -hmm. do you, you know we need to also act so that we're able to prevent because prevention is better than you know you know mm -hmm. cure because just imagine you having to take those chemotherapy drugs the devastation it brings i read about some people that took there some years ago and later on in life, they are having um, other secondary cancers. Yeah, no, it can happen, but yeah. Mm. So it's uh, so we, difficult. It's a difficult one. Yeah. I, I, Adrian, I think you are better off in this research. So we are looking forward to you getting us uh, to that <laughs> level of oh, engagement. Oh no, I, I, I'm. Yeah, no, I mean, my, I'm, I'm not involved actively in research at the moment, Abby. I'm, I'm not, I'm not well enough myself to do that right now. But certainly, I'm keen to try and do my little bit in communication of some of the results and things, and trying to help um, us exchange information as, as, as you know, people who are experiencing this and uh, helping each other and supporting each other and sharing knowledge and sharing information as we learn more things and i think there'll be a lot more of that over over time it's 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 wonderful Evie, to join with you today in celebrating the fact that this next step if you like of your journey and i know it's not the end but i know there's many more steps to come and some real mm. challenging steps because for a parent to knowingly put their child through some of the sort of suffering really that 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 mm -hmm. these treatments involve i know it's for a good reason uh, but it must be really hard um, to do that, you know, because I've, I've, I've certainly seen, you know, what, what that can look like for people. It's not an easy thing. It might be long times in hospital and not feeling very well, maybe getting infections, all of these kinds of things um, as you go through these next steps. So, you know, our hope um, will be with you. Our prayers will be with you and our support will be with you all the way. As Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank um, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And, and so, you know, we will obviously um, keep, you know, updating um, Abby's an author now on uh, the Blood Cancer Uncensored website. There's mm -hmm. also a website specifically for Nathaniel. And there's a Facebook group um, called mm -hmm. Nathaniel's Angels. 
So, you know, by all means, mm -hmm. guys can follow in any or all of those places to, to be a part of this story moving forwards. And if you've yes, given some money, um, yes, you know, we, we love, we love that. We love the fact that you've shared the story, um, mm -hmm. but don't stop now, you know, um, mm -hmm. join our prayers together and uh, for, for, for good, good, positive future for this lovely boy. Um, mm -hmm. And also follow the story and continue to share and, and let's, let's see, you know, additional funds raised so that other families can also uh, experience the blessing um, of, of this kind of help and that no that's yeah. that's the desire and to support other families in whatever way uh, is necessary not not just financially but also sort of psychologically and, and one to one mm. I know it's been a huge challenge for you and and yet in that you've been supporting other families too haven't you Abby? yeah what i what i intend to do is a little knowledge i've got it um i tend to put them together and whatever material i have um I would also share with the general public for um, other families that are going through such 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 um, difficult times. It's it's really difficult when your child is. If my child had like um, an infection, it's I won't be worried like this, you know. But um, leukemia, <laughs> yeah. Even the word in in Africa is a taboo. So how much more now know that your child has leukemia yeah. and it's AML, which is the one of the deadliest form of oh yeah form of um, blood cancers. Oh, it is. So yeah. I would put together my piece and um, try and reach out to other families as well that yeah. are going through such and um, try and stretch out a helping hand to them as I have also been helped. Yeah, by strangers that have turned to sisters and brothers as well. It, it so, really does uh, res restore some of your hope in the positive difference that we can make in our lives. And I think that, you know, in a way, that's probably a good place for us to sort of land this and just to challenge each of us that we don't realize sometimes the difference we can make. That chance mm -hmm. encounter um, in a mm -hmm. Facebook group um, mm -hmm. that, that happened between um, Ebby and Sharon, that chance encounter you know that you might have in a different context where mm. who knows what we will lead to in terms of a new friendship and a mm. new opportunity but it's often an opportunity that we can miss if we're not careful to to make a huge difference in someone's life and mm. instead of thinking about the whole world out there sometimes <clears> it's good to just think about what's in front of my face you know what what is god calling me to do what what is mm. what is you know what is coming together here where i can help I've got the skills that's needed or the money that's needed or the little little bit of social network influence that's needed to, to get a story out or to encourage somebody uh, or to make a difference to somebody. Sometimes just to listen, let's be honest. Um, mm. it's, it's quite important sometimes just to listen to somebody and hear their story, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think um, when I got in touch with Abby that I would be being part of that massive <laughs> fundraising. I really didn't think that was gonna happen. Um, I just didn't want to leave them without trying. Yeah. So it sort of snowballed and we started to get hints of something working. Mm. We just kept going. <laughs> we kept going and we kept pushing. And I kept saying to Abby, just baby steps as long as it's steps as long yeah. as we're moving forward as long as we keep going mm -hmm. then we're not going backwards we're just going to keep going forward until we can run and that's literally what Wonderful. happened yeah thank you so much sharon you're welcome she's, she's she's always, every day always pushed me you know <laughs> she's always pushed me we will get this done yeah we will yeah get we will and get this are, done. So, yes, um, yeah. and there we are we're now ready for the next step huh Yes. yes, please. Yes, 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 please. But when will because... that when will that be? So so do you know roughly what we're talking about? I, I know they've got to prepare things and get mm. ready. So yeah, so a series of um tests um lined up, which we've we've done about three quarters of them. Okay. So we have um the last lumbar puncture test this um Wednesday, Thursday, mm -hmm. just to check the state of the bone marrow. Um, then we have a meeting for 
a BMT meeting for the 19th. And um, we'll be able to now sit down and say, okay, these are the plans. So, but the doctors are working behind the scenes. So they are collating all the test results. Yeah. Um, so as to, I think we have one more test, which is the ophthalmology test. Because what they are doing is that they are making sure every part of the body is in good shape yeah. to go for the bone marrow. And again, they are also bringing in all the doctors that, because they normally have what they call the host versus graft. Um, um, you know, they're trying to, they're being um, proactive. Yeah. So as soon as those things come up, the doctors go back to their um, scans, yeah. their scans and their reports, and now say, okay, before we started giving this stem cell, this is what's happened. Now, where, where are we? So they're making sure but the word is they're crossing the T's and yeah. dotting the I's before yeah, this, we do that. A big, yeah, it's a big task, isn't it? And yes. Because you're actually, for those people that don't understand what a stem cell transplant is, you're actually basically getting somebody almost to the point of, of no return because you, you have to actually kill um, all the sort of stem cells that you have in your own bone marrow because those are obviously at risk of, of producing more cancer. So you kill all the cancer, you kill all the stem cells, and at that point, you, you, you would die. Um, but, until, but before you die, they give you some, someone else's stem cells, or sometimes your own, if they've, if they've been able mm. to harvest your own and keep them pure, uh, which does happen with some blood cancers, but not with AML. Um, so they give you, in this case, it will be the umbilical cord um, stem cells that they've got from some kind parent who decided one day that rather than throwing away their umbilical cord they would give it so that's a huge thing uh, for anyone mm. watching you know take a swab uh, get yourself on the stem cell list if you do have a mm. baby put the umbilical cord into these these pools and that that's a huge step but but those cells then obviously have to engraft and they don't always but hopefully they will and most of the time they do now they're quite good at that um, getting them to grow into the body and then of course as you just mentioned there's the risk that the cells that are coming into the body might attack not just any last little cancer cells that might still be there, but also the body itself. So this mm. is a huge challenge and there are drugs that they have to give and various steps that they do. And they've obviously gone a huge way in this from the early days um, mm. in how they do this. And it's, it's amazing. And the guys at Great Ormond Street are among the best in the world at doing this. So you're mm. in, in fantastic hands and, mm. and, and we'll be praying every step of the way, but it's going to be difficult. There's going to be challenges along the way, I'm sure um it's not going to be easy so we'll, we'll as i say we'll, we'll stand with you in that and um hopefully you'll you know this we're looking at a great example story for for other people to have hope because that's one of the other things isn't it we, we were on a group just the other day weren't we i mean we were able to introduce you to somebody who's 20 years out from one of these yeah things. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, the lady you know doing well and that was an amazing thing different blood cancer in that instance but another aggressive one um, mm. and someone who thought that they weren't going to necessarily live and 20 years on they've got to see their children grow up and um, mm. you know basically doing really well so you know there was there was hope there there was always hope and, and I think it's always good to cling on to that isn't it to come back to the umbilical cord um, donation not every hospital does it so I had actually tried to donate all of my kids cords apart from my elders because it wasn't really known at the time um and our hospitals up here don't take them huh. so to, to get you know more of that involved all over the uk and to try mm. and make that the norm a bit like organ donation it's going in the bin anyway so yeah why not use it um it seems madness that it just gets incinerated it's just yeah that is crazy and, and then of course as well the you know the the um the swabbing of the mouth in order to try and get a match and um, particularly yeah. for young people but people of uh, not quite any age but basically the younger you are the better for that better. 30 yeah. down 30 below yeah but they do take some a bit older as well they but, do take uh, them over yeah, yeah. They're, and they're, they're they're spreading that out more so they're taking more older people but the yeah. more the younger ones the better and so if you're a young person watching this um then please do you know send off one of these swabs it doesn't you don't have to go somewhere you can just get it sent to you you just swab your inside of your chin and cheek and the only people that will get that information are the health people and yeah. then you'll be going onto this great fantastic database that is growing all the time 
mm. uh, thousands and thousands of people on it and usually nothing will happen but sometimes you'll get you'll be matched um and the, and then you can save a life and mm. there's not very many opportunities to save a life that directly really i mean no. obviously some people do by jumping in a river or something and rescuing mm-hmm. someone that way but it's it's literally like that it's, it's as much a bigger hero as that and you know i don't even know if if the um person that donated your s- cord blood will or cords cord, you know umbilical cord will ever know mm. uh, that, that little decision they made one day as you say not to just throw it away and burn it but to actually save it and see if it could be useful for someone else or somebody they may never know that 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 decision hopefully will lead to your child having a life because only 20 percent of non-white um, people, uh, so of any background other than white, will, will actually get a match. That's a match, yeah. They're yeah, right, you're right. So, even even um, Nathaniel, he couldn't, um, amongst us and his siblings, yeah. nobody was a match. So they said for us, like, um, it's, it has to be one in, one in four, four people yeah. to have a match. So, oh. we're so we're so lucky to get a match as soon as they made the call out yeah which is amazing wow. so so there's the challenge i think for for people watching you mm-hmm. know it's not just about sharing the link which is still worth doing uh, it's not just about donating some of your money which again it's still worth doing it's not even just about praying for for ebby and for nathaniel and for ebby's wife um which is obviously much welcome but it's also about can i can I save a life with my blood? Uh, yeah. And for those of us who are believers uh, in Jesus, and I know not everybody watching this will be, but for those of us who are, Jesus shed his blood for us. Mm. What more Christian thing could there be to give your blood for someone else that mm. they might live? I mean, that's an amazing thought, isn't it? Yeah, very, very, very right. Thank you so much for that. It's sent. It sends me some messages, you know. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. No, thank you, Abby, and, and thank you, Sharon. And it's been a huge privilege to get to know you both just a little bit in just the last week or so. Um, yeah. And exciting to see. Fast tracks. Well, that's Thank you, Adrian. Said well. fast tracks. Yeah. I said no. the, the, the airlifting I was talking about, you know, the step, when you move a step, you could see you just met her last week. We met last week, you could see the push. Yeah. There's something that just pushed you like you've known each other for like forever. Yeah. And you're also dealing with your own uh, leukemia as well, Adrian. And you're oh. you know, battling that as well as battling with us. And you've just jumped on this ship and you have helped it to sail. And without you, you know, we would be much less than what we are now. So thank you mm. for dedicating that time. And um, and it's been a pleasure to get to know you as well oh bless you and it's like I, I, it, there's so many people that have all played their own little role and i guess we all feel like little tiny cogs um yeah. but you know that's the cr- crucial message when we all work together we we'll work together and i've got a friend a very thing. lovely friend who has not only donated a considerable amount of money um but when we were dealing with fundraising and opening accounts and wondering about tax you know how do we protect ourselves and sh- her husband gave me free advice you know that would have cost us a lot of money to get and so amazing. there's another piece of the puzzle you know it's another just that, isn't it? every little bit coming together and that that's a beautiful picture really the kindness you know, yeah it's, it's like it's powerful. almost like a human body you know where one part's the eye and one part's yeah. the mouth mouth yeah <laughs> And one there's, a, there's, a, there's a little a little boy um uh, the mom sent me a message um yeah oh, oh I'm crying don't i don't Go know on, Abby, tell us the story us. tell us the story that on, message Abby. is the is the best message i received today he used his money five pounds he says he wants to do it so oh, good hello Oh, don't, I, don't, don't, uh, listen, don't do this. I am not going to cry. I've cried all day. I've no, cried you can cry. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah, you're free to cry. Please cry. Oh, I can't do that on camera. No way. Oh. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. I have cried <laughs> and, all day. Abby's and cried I, all day. And I, and I, and I, and I sent a message back to the mom, telling the mom, thank you. And the mom said, that they are actually crying at home, that I actually replied their email. Mm. 
I I was so touched by. He said he they watched the TV the TV um show this morning, mm. and he wants to use his pocket money five pounds. Yeah. He said, "Mommy, give me my five pounds. I want to give it to this young boy to save his life." Yeah. <laughs> what you said about people um having to come together, this this humanity, you know, it's should share the love and um oh yeah. i'm short of words thank you so much no, I, I, that's, that's his same. name is his name is joseph joseph Wonderful. the name is in my yeah you won't name. forget that name I will that's never the thing, forget it's, that it's that it's it might feel like such a small thing yes um, but it can make a huge huge difference and i guess that's a message It'd be great to leave people with is you can make a difference. Yeah. And this story proves yeah. that you really can. You might not feel like you can, but you really can. Didn't just um, donate his money. He gave, you know, kindness and love mm. they didn't have to to a complete stranger. And that made both of us well up. And I'm sure yeah. anyone who saw that story was the same. You know? Yeah. So Joseph. Thank, thank you, Joseph. Thank, thank you, Joseph. You, Joseph. And thank you, every other person. I mean, I, mm. I started looking down the list, you know, because I was kind of thinking, where's this all come from? I was expecting to see a sort of, I don't know, £20,000 here or £50,000 mm. there. And that's what I thought. Like that, really. it was yeah, just that's like what I thought. I saw 51000 and then I saw 82000 and I thought, oh, my gosh, someone's needed a huge amount of money. Yeah. And I scrolled through and I just saw all these £5, £10, £20, yeah. and I just thought, that's... Wow. You know, that's, that's amazing. And you want to kind of wish we could sort of give an email like you did to Joseph to every one of those. So if you are one yes, of those people, absolutely. I'm going to say thank you. Thank you so much to thank. You see, it's not just giving. You see, it takes kindness to give. Yeah. And, you know, it is so it is so amazing that in the midst of the hardship in the world, COVID era, you know, like, you know, when I say it's a miracle, you know, I tend to bend spiritual. But, you know, out of nothing, people still give. Yeah. They had the call. They, they, they might have said, I'm not giving. What's, why would I give you? Go back to your country. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. But yeah. out, of, out of the little they have, they still give. And that is just pure love. Yeah. It's wonderful. It's pure love, pure love. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody that gave. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. Yeah. You know, for coming to our cries. You know, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank well, you. That's a great place to stop, really, isn't it? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.